Good evening, everybody. This is Pull Up with Limbs and Things with Dr. Chanel James and Ms. T. Rhonda Lockhart tonight. She is a cardiac registered nurse in DC. And tonight we're talking a little bit about heart health. So this week, I took a full week of self-care. I did a little painting, a little jumping rope, um, walking outside, walking inside, doing just all different fun activities to reduce my stress, but also to maintain a healthy heart. So what we'll talk about tonight is about how physical activity as well as other factors like lifestyle changes can help you to maintain a healthy heart. So tonight we have Ms. T. Rhonda Lockhart. She's a cardiac nurse at Washington Hospital Center. And we are both fellow Washingtonians as well as Banneker High School alumni. So tonight <laughs> we have Ms. Lockhart. What do you want to share with us tonight? Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining in on us. I uh, just wanted to talk about ways to keep your heart healthy while you're at home. So some of the things you, that I recommend you all do is to number one, exercise. You can do about 30 minutes each day, which equals about two and a half hours per week. If you're a step counter, that's about 7,000 to 10,000 steps per day. Small little, um, small things like parking further away from the grocery store, entrance and walking to and from the grocery, I mean, to and from the door. That can help with getting a little bit of cardio in, taking the steps instead of an elevator, um, walking through the mall. I know COVID is going on, so walking outside in your yeah. neighborhoods is also a good way of just getting some of that cardio workout and mm -hmm. also things such as eating healthy. So I know we, I know I love fried chicken, but the air fryer is a, a, a great tool that I have been utilizing myself in order to keep me from eating extra calories and extra cholesterol. It's very important to try to switch it up, eat some, you can bake your food, saute mm -hmm. it. Um, instead of using butter, they have a lot of vegetable spreads that are really healthy for you just to help control and maintain your cholesterol levels because cholesterol actually goes into your heart arteries and they, it's kind of like a, I would say like a pipe. So the cholesterol will build up in the pipe and it'll make it smaller and smaller and it makes a hard way for your blood to flow through the pipe. So you don't want high cholesterol. So things like avocados, salmon, those are all really good substitutes for eating, um, high cholesterol foods. You want to do boneless, skinless chicken. The skin contains a lot of the fat where the cholesterol hides. Mm -hmm. um, so simple modifications like that um, are really good with helping to keep your cholesterol down. Also, uh, if you have hypertension or if you have diabetes, you want to make sure that you control those things it's very important hypertension it makes your heart work harder and it, it's one of the precursors to cardiac disease right so in order to prevent that you want to make sure you take your medication every day you want to eat food that's low in sodium and i know sometimes we think that we're eating low in sodium food but actually like the recommended dose for salt is one teaspoon per day mm. A day. Yeah, per day, <laughs> one teaspoon, which is 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So when you go to the grocery store, look at the back of those, um, the back of the food. And the nutrition the, label. Yes, thank you. Look at the nutrition label, see how much sodium is in your food. I strongly recommend that you do not eat processed foods. Processed foods are packed with sodium, carbs, all things that are bad for you. And actually, things taste better when you make it yourself. So, um, yeah, like I was saying, so you want things that are low in sodium. I would say eat fresh or frozen vegetables and fruit. If you have to eat something in a can, rinse it off. So open the can up, pour that syrup or whatever it's sitting in off, pour some water in it, 
and shake it up, stir it up, and pour that off, and then um, prepare your food. Um, so what else? So canned food is okay, but it's not the best option. So you want right. fresh frozen fresh or frozen vegetables. You want green leafy vegetables, such as kale, collard, spinach, all that yummy goodness that we all love <laughs> to eat. But skip the salt <laughs> um, when you're cooking it. Um, what else can I think of? As far as, oh, and you also, you want to check your blood pressure. So we recommend that you check your blood pressure every day if you're on blood pressure medication and you want to check it first thing in the morning prior to taking your medicine. Um, us at the hospital, we love when people come in with everything written down for their appointment. So if you want to check your blood pressure, have a little notebook beside you, write it down for the week so that your doctor can get a good grips on whether your medication is working for you. Or if it's not, like if your blood pressure is constantly 160 over 90 or 160 over 100, which is way too high, right. um, your doctor may need to increase your blood pressure medicine. But they may need to decrease it if your systolic, which is the top number, is under 90. So it's just some things that help us out when helping you all out. So you just want to keep a little notepad with you, write everything down for to take to your doctor. Right. Um, what else can I think about? Um, it's going dead again. So your blood pressure, your diabetes. I know a lot of a lot of us we love sugary food. We and we don't we think when we read the back of the nutrition labels that if it doesn't say sugar, then there's no sugar in it. But mm -hmm. carbohydrates are sugar. Carbs break down into sugar. Um, so things like noodles, rice, potatoes, even um, fruits and vegetables have sugar in it, but those are good ones. Mm -hmm. If you're a diabetic, you want to eat your fruits and vegetables earlier on in the day. Um, that way you can burn it off throughout the day. If you're a diabetic, you want to check your blood sugar prior to your meals, and you want your numbers to be 80 through 120. Take your medication as prescribed. So if you take metformin or insulin, just because your numbers are higher than they're supposed to be, doesn't mean to double up on your medicine or anything like that. And then if your numbers are lower than they're supposed to be, that doesn't mean you can stop your medication regimen at all. Mm -hmm. I know um, I'm guilty of it as well. When I think I feel better, I just decide I'm not going to take medicine anymore. But that's right. not how that works. You can't take mm -hmm. yourself off your medication. Um, so basically just making sure you're you're doing a regimen with your medicine. Also exercising like we spoke of mm -hmm. and then watching what you eat is very, very important. The things that we put in our body um, is like one of the most important things when taking care of yourself. Yeah. You, you know, you get in what you put out. It's like getting an oil change. And if you don't do that, your car is going to break down. So. If you don't take good care of yourself, your body is going to break down. So you want to eat right, drink plenty of water, get exercise, sunlight, try not to stress. I know with COVID, things seem very stressful, um, but things are, you know, things are actually looking up with COVID. We have the vaccination. I know some people don't believe in it. I got it. I didn't have any weird symptoms. I didn't have any symptoms at all. My grandmother, who's 80 years old, she received it. She didn't have any symptoms. Um, so, you know, if anybody has any questions about that, let me know. Uh, but COVID isn't all bad. You know, we've seen the flu has gone down because we all have a mask. It just makes you think maybe we should have been mas wearing masks the whole time to prevent a lot of things such as the com um, common code and the flu from spreading to one another. And hand washing is also very important. You know, we've seen a lot of hand washing increases and right. carrying out antibacterial um, wipes and things like that. So uh, I know life can kind of be kind of stressful, but I think exercise definitely number one helps with that, especially mm -hmm. cardio. Um, you get like a euphoric feeling afterwards. Right. Um, anything you want to add, Chanel, that you can think of? Sure, like lifestyle modification. So there, there are times when people will say, well, I smoke 
or um, all of those things have an effect on your heart, but also your lungs as well. You want to talk mm -hmm. to that point? So, yeah. So smoking definitely um, increases your oxygen demand uh, of your body. So it, it makes your heart and your lungs work harder. I know, you know, people may think it's a hard habit to kick, but there are things that you can do such as the patch and things like that, that can help you with that habit. Um, because smoking, it just pours toxins into your body and you're breathing it in through your airway. Right. So your lungs are affected, your heart is affected, and also the rest of your body because you're not receiving enough oxygenated blood to go throughout your body. Right. Um, and just also, like the major, sorry, the major okay. effect or purpose of your heart is to pump blood to other areas. And if you're smoking, mm -hmm. the blood can't get through to the different areas, especially your lower limbs. So I find that I'm working with people who have amputations because they've smoked, which uh -huh. then led to their blood getting too thick to get all the way down to their feet. So they've lost circulation there and now they've had an amputation. Yep. That's, um, so I work with a lot of people who come to have those um, blockages cleared. The so sense, clear blockages yes. in the heart and in the, yeah. in the legs. Mm -hmm. And all the time, they always have hypertension, diabetes, and they smoke. So those are like the three biggest things that really, really affect your overall health when it comes to just being like optimized, like having having blood go through your body. Like mm -hmm. whatever blood does not get, you're going to have an issue. Right. For instance, when you don't get blood to your heart, you have a heart attack. So, you know, you start feeling the chest pain. It radiates to your jaw, your neck. It goes to either arm. It feels like really, really bad indigestion. Mm -hmm. You get weak. You might faint, nauseated sweating and having shortness of breath because you literally cannot breathe none of you know your heart is not getting any oxygen mm -hmm. so that's what causes a heart attack um and so what can you do at home if you're feeling those symptoms so you, you always start, need to go to the hospital or can you do something um so if you start feeling like you're nauseated you have the chest pain that goes to your back your neck your jaws anything like that you want to take four baby aspirins because most people have baby aspirin at home. So you want to take four baby aspirins and call 911 right away. So um, they can come and get you. People always want to drive themselves to the hospital. Please do not drive yourself to the hospital. Please call 911 and let the ambulance take you because they may have to do life-saving measures on the way. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask you, when you take mm -hmm. the baby aspirin, should you swallow it with water or should you chew it? Um, Please chew it. So chew the baby aspirin, swallow it. You don't need water, just get it down the hatch. But if you have a full strength aspirin, just take one. So the full strength aspirin is 324 milligrams. So, and the baby aspirin is 81 milligrams. That's why we say if you have baby aspirin, which most people take daily to mm -hmm. help prevent heart disease, if they have cholesterol, you know, we have, when people have um, high cholesterol that are a certain age, they always prescribe things like a statin drug, Mm -hmm. which helps lower the cholesterol so cholesterol lowering agent and they prescribe a baby aspirin so if you have that you want to take four baby aspirins and you want to call 911 and let them pick you up and get to the hospital okay mm -hmm. um and then also another area where we see a lot of issues when people have heart disease um hypertension diabetes they smoke they have strokes mm -hmm. so um warning signs of a stroke you have um dizziness one you know you feel weak on one side can't raise your arm can't smile fully mm -hmm. um you might um fall you have a fall you get confused you can't understand what people are saying or you're not speaking correctly for that you want to call 911 right away and if you have a spouse um like if your spouse is if it's happening to your spouse you want to kind of remember around what time the first symptoms started. Mm -hmm. That way they can rush you to the hospital and begin treatment right away. Um, if you have any of these symptoms from a heart attack or a stroke, you don't just want to sit at home and think maybe it'll pass. Let right. me take a nap. You know, it's just indigestion. I might've ate something wrong. You have any of the symptoms, just go ahead and call 911 and get to the hospital. Um, it's the safest thing to do. 
uh, well, I, I think I, any, what, any question you have, Chanel? Well, we have a question over here, so let's okay. see. And then if anyone else that's joining us watching has a question, please put it in the chat and we will answer it. So the first question is, what's the right. normal BP for Black people? So normal blood pressure is 120, which is the top number, your systolic, over 80, which is the low number, um, your diastolic blood pressure. You want to keep it right in that range. Most people have it either a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but just right in that range is like the optimal blood pressure. That's what we like to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So you went over blood sugar ranges. Just can you say that again? I think you said 80 to 120. Oh yeah. So with the blood sugar ranges, when you check your blood sugar prior to eating is 80 milligram. I mean, sorry. I don't know where milligrams came from. I apologize. It's 80 through 120. Mm -hmm. After you eat, the normal is about 160. If you're going over the 160, that means you're eating something that contains too many carbohydrates. Um, so drink some water, you know, instead of drinking juice and soda mm -hmm. and caffeinated beverages. In even though stuff says low sugar um, or low fat, low cholesterol, when you flip it over and you read the back of those nutrition labels, it's always something we shouldn't have. So the best the best thing is just to have fresh fruits and vegetables and you know if you do a protein sauteed fish or baked fish or sauteed chicken baked chicken um cut back on the bacon i love bacon too <laughs> but it's not good for us so yeah gotcha and then what's the way that we can reduce hospital visits um reduce the hospital visits i would say preventative care so um Preventive care, as in, make sure when I was talking about, can you guys still see me? I'm sorry, I know it's getting dark. No, if you turn your light on, that'd be great. How about that? That works. You sure? Or? That's even better. Okay, so um, reducing, sorry, reducing hospital visits. Um, go into your primary care physician and telling them basically, you know, getting, a, getting an oil change for your car. So mm -hmm. go ahead and go to your primary care ph physician, take all your medicine as prescribed. Like I said, I know you want to stop taking your medicine because your your blood sugar has been in control or you changed your diet. So now you're doing this low carb keto thing. So you think you don't have to take your blood sugar medication, but the medicine is what's making your blood sugar maintain a stable and correct um, number. And also the exercise, getting out there, walking, pump those arms you know, try to get some movement going. Just changing your lifestyle is a huge help with the mm -hmm. no smoking, little to no caffeine, you know. I know some people need their daily coffee, so I understand that. Um, but sodas, cut it out, artificial sweeteners, cut that out, you know, when you cook, use garlic or different herbs, stuff like that. Instead of using salt, they're a great not even just substitutes, it's just great stuff that you can put on your food to give it a really good flavor that you don't have to use salt at all. Like instead of using a low sugar or low cholesterol um, salad dressing, squeeze some lemon on top of your lettuce. It tastes amazing. I promise you, I wouldn't lie. Like, you know, certain, yeah, certain <laughs> things like that. Uh -oh. What does it say? So we've got another question here. It says, if your cholesterol consists of more of the good HDL instead of the bad, does that lessen your chances of having a heart attack? Yes, it does lessen your chances of having a heart attack. So the HDL is like happy. That's what the H stands for in HDL. Um, so you want that level to be high. I wrote down exactly what the number was because I can't remember all these numbers in my head. Um, but I don't know where I wrote it at. So... You want your HDL to be high and you want your LDL to be low. You don't want your overall cholesterol to go over, I think it's 120. It's 120. And, but most of the time when people have high cholesterol, you know, they, so the cholesterol builds up like plaque inside of your artery. I wish I could draw. Maybe I can. Can y'all see if I draw? Maybe. Um, so you, here we go. So, Say for instance, let's see here. 
this is an artery or this can be a vein. Can y'all see it? Can you see it? Bring it a little closer. There you go. Okay. Okay. So what happens is the cholesterol, it, I'm going to squizzle. All of this is cholesterol and it builds up all in your veins and your arteries. So this is what causes, like when people have like um, peripheral arterial disease or peripheral vascular disease, mm -hmm. and they start to lose those limbs, you know, the, the toe turns black and stuff like that. It's because the blood flow can't get there. So the blood is supposed to go in here. It's supposed to have all of this space. But if we constantly are eating stuff that's bad for our cholesterol, then the cholesterol kind of builds up and it makes the space tighter and tighter. So right. what the HDL does is it helps, it helps prevent this stuff from adhering to your arteries and your veins. I hope that answered it. So yes. It did. That was really okay. good. I like the visual too. <laughs> yeah. Because I often think of it like a, a traffic stop, like mm -hmm. when people have a stroke or something and how the, the brain needs blood supply to get to it. And a lot of times if you don't have the free flowing, just like a regular um, highway, if mm -hmm. you can't continue to go through, then you have a blockage, right? And so that leads to you having a stroke in that area because you have a blockage of your artery. That's that's the perfect way to think of it. That's exactly what happens. There's another question. Is there a okay. test that you can take before you have a heart, heart attack symptoms that would let you know if you have too much plaque in your arteries? Oh, that's a good question. So um, there, so you can do a stress test if we're mm -hmm. talking about, um, if we're talking about the heart, you can have a stress test. So what that is, um, there are two different kinds that you can either run on a treadmill and um, they take a, they do an EKG and take some pictures and see if you have any blockages anywhere or they can give you a medication that can simulate you running on a treadmill. Um, oftentimes with women, the stress test, oh, it happens with men as well, but the stress test comes back like with false readings. So a cardiac cath, which is what I do, I do cardiac cath, um, is like the definitive answer. But if you keep your cholesterol and your blood pressure and everything in check and, oh, you know, it lessens your chances of having a heart attack. That was a great question, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but the What's a cardiac cath? So a cardiac cath is when they, they'll go in through like a, like a, uh, excuse me, they use, a, they go in through an artery, they use something that's similar to like an IV, but it's larger. Mm -hmm. They can put it in your wrist here, which is called the radio approach, or they can go into um, your femoral artery, which is down by your leg. You do receive conscious sedation, so you're nice and comfortable. Um, and we talk through, talk you through the whole thing. And we go in and we shoot some some dye. And we take a look to see if you have any blockages using the dye. So we take a look to see if you have any blockages in your heart when we do a cardiac cath. But also people can have it in their legs as well. Um, that's called a peripheral catheterization. And we see if you have blockages that are causing you to have, like sometimes people have like leg pain and can't walk long distances or even mm -hmm. short distances without having pain. So now those, uh, are those considered preventative or no? No, those are not preventative. Those, um, so no. If you're having a heart attack, then it's not like a preventative measure. It's a life-saving measure. Mm -hmm. If you're just having like some chest pain that's ongoing, it's something that you that a doctor would recommend that you get in to schedule and have it done. A less invasive method. The less invasive method would be the stress test. Um, okay. So the stress I'm test. I'm familiar with those too because we do those um, or we have people when we do cardiac rehab and physical therapy where people can be on a bike as well. Mm -hmm. um, just if you're not as active, there are other methods as opposed to just going on a treadmill. Okay. But yeah, exactly. there's active and then the inactive one as you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. where you said you give a is it a pill? No, it's a IV medication. So they put IV like medication. A, okay. a medicine through your IV. Okay. And it simulates you running on the treadmill. Okay. okay. So there. So those are like one more basic methods. 
Okay. I wanted to ask you from the aspect of knowing your vital signs, when, when people have um, pulse oximeters and they are looking at their heart rate and their oxygen, mm-hmm. is there like a sweet number that they should try to obtain? So for like a uh, person that is like a normal person that doesn't swim or run long distances or anything like that, mm-hmm. the normal heart rate would be like 60 to 80. Um, but if you're a swimmer or you do lots of cardio, then your number may be a little lower than 60. But, you know, you just inform people around you, like, you know, if you go to a doctor's appointment so that they don't get freaked out. But 60 mm-hmm. to 80 is like the optimum number. If you if you go above 100 for a non-resting heart rate, we get a little concerned with that. For as right. far as So the- less than 60 is too slow if you're mm-hmm. not as active. Mm-hmm. And then um, more yeah, than more 100 than is too high. Well, or more than, than 80? Yeah, we, we get a little concerned. <laughs> okay. Um, but 100 is, like, definitely, like, like what's going on, you know? Mm-hmm. So 60 through 80 is that that line. You you go, you, you know, you can go in between 60 and 80 for normal rest and heart rate. Okay. Um, for the pulse ox, the best number you can have is 100%. Uh, anything under 92% and you're just sitting there, there is some issue that you need to get checked out. So, um, but 100 is the best, you know, deep breathing. We like to do that to calm us down. <laughs> Take a right. deep breath. Um, and, and also, I know a lot of people were concerned about like um, COVID and like stuff like that so like deep breathing and coughing is good because it pops the lungs open um so you know that's like a little home thing if, and it also helps calm you down as well and it gets that oxygen in your body for sure yeah. is there any concern for those who have heart disease with wearing masks um no so the the mask is the mask is more so to protect you and other people from like if you know if you go in a public area space is good but the mask is just to protect you from receiving or transmitting anything to another person and it doesn't mm-hmm. have anything to do with heart disease at all um, it's safer to wear the mask than it, than not you know. Um, in the grocery store or at the mall or at work, we don't know who other people have been around and it only takes one right. person to spread COVID. So hand washing, wearing the mask, the mask will not do anything to heart disease. It's a, it's actually better to wear the mask, like I said, because now we haven't heard of anyone catching the flu. I know it's been mm-hmm. less common colds going around. So just wear the mask, people. I wear my, my mask. Same here. <laughs> Okay, are there any final thoughts you have? I think we answered all the questions. If you're watching with us, you can comment live. That'll help us know if you were here. And if you're catching this after we have done this broadcast, if you put replay, that would be helpful to us as well. Miss Lockhart, do you have any other comments you want to share? Um, No, I just want to say thank you. And I'm super proud of you. Sure. So thank you oh, for, thank for allowing you. me to jump on here <laughs> and speak with everyone. I appreciate it. But if anyone has... Sure. I'm proud of you, too. All of the great things that you're doing with Cardiac Health and Washington Hospital Center and in general, too. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We hope you have gained some good information about how to maintain a healthy lifestyle, a healthy heart, just in general, and that you know that you can seek either one of us if you have any further questions. Thank you so much for coming to pull up with limbs and things. Take care. Ah.